Kurt Angle is quite simply one of the best professional wrestlers of all time. A member of many halls of fame, Angle's accomplishments speak for themselves and he deserves the utmost respect for his contributions to the sport. But, let's face it, the man has also become something of a meme in recent years. Some sections of the internet wrestling community celebrate not just Kurt's title triumphs and epic matches, but also the times where he became Perk Angle. I won't get into the particulars, if you know you know, but in this instance, we're using the term perk to describe those moments where Kurt seemingly found a whole other level of intensity or insanity from which to operate on. Ladies and gentlemen, the bean is well and truly about to kick in. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 times Kurt Angle went full perk. Yeah! Number 10, trying to break the rocks ankle. A No Way Out 2000, Kurt Angle beat Chris Jericho to add the Intercontinental title to the European Championship he had been in possession of for the past couple of weeks. A year later, Angle, who had been on the WWE roster for less than 18 months, was walking into No Way Out as the defending WWE Champion, putting his title on the line against The Rock in the show's headliner. It got on quickly, didn't he? The pay-per-view poster boy had been freakishly good from the start, but at this stage he had really ramped up one of his famed three eyes, intensity. And he had to be at his very best against the Great One, the two putting on a tremendous back and forth battle. Digging deep into his arsenal, Angle busted out what would be one of his favoured weapons going forward, the ankle lock. Debuting his new finisher clearly excited the Olympian, who shouted at the top of his lungs, spit flying from his mouth, tap out you son of a bitch, do it now, I'll break your, well, you know what, foot. I, for one, believe him. Number 9. Trying to get booed at New Year's Revolution After several years of spellbinding in-ring performances and memorable moments, fans found it hard to hate Kurt Angle. He'd given so much for their entertainment and had genuinely been one of the best wrestlers in the world for a while by that point, so it was hard not to applaud and cheer him on even if just out of respect. Drawing attention to his own unwavering popularity while ostensibly portraying a heel at New Year's Revolution 2006, Kurt delivered a completely OTT backstage promo. Flanked by manager Davari, the man who had proudly represented his country said that he hoped the USA lost the war in Iraq. In addition, he felt as though the great the greatest country in the world was actually France. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Continuing, he admitted that he wasn't a very big fan of the black people, complete with air quotes. Hammering his points home, he professed the one historical figure he would love to make tap out was Jesus Christ himself. It was all said with a heavy coating of sarcasm, and Angle was naturally still cheered when he entered the elimination chamber and began wrecking people later that night. Number 8. Tranquilizing the Big Show Kurt Angle had every right to be mad at the Big Show in 2004. The world's largest athlete had, lest we forget, went on a rampage and chokeslammed our Olympic hero from a high ledge down to a concrete floor that April, putting him in a wheelchair which was storyline cover to allow Angle to recover from yet another neck operation. Show disappeared for a while to have surgery of his own, but came back in September and went after the now former SmackDown general manager. Angle realized the threat the big nasty bastard carried and did the logic thing we would all do if we were being pursued by a pissed off giant. He shot him with a tranquilizer gun and shaved his hair off. Yes, with the help of Mark Jindrak and Luther Reigns, Angle went all King Kong on Paul White, spiking him with a dart before giving him a short back and sides. It was a memorable angle, no pun intended, and Kurt looked like he was having the time of his life posing over his prey while smiling like a perked up big game hunter. Number 7. Sexy Kurt one of the more frightening things about our old pal Percules was his ability to go from playing the clown and taking the mick out of himself one minute to looking like a straight-up dangerous psychopath the next. Endearing yet terrifying, Kurt was adept at flipping the switch and getting serious when the situation called for it. One of Angle's most famous WWE segments was his rendition of Sexy Kurt, his own braggadocious take on the theme song for WrestleMania opponent Shawn Michaels. I think I'm cute! I got gold medals, I got the moves to make them all tap out the angle slam, the ankle lock, Marty Janetti still can't walk, I'm just a sexy Kurt, sexy Kurt, well you know how it goes. 
It was genuinely hilarious, and he was clearly enjoying every second of it. However, once the Heartbreak Kid cosplay was done with, Kurt flipped the switch and attacked Sean's former flame sensational Sherry Martell, trapping her in the ankle lock as she wailed in agony. Serves you right to be honest, Sherry. You should have known better than to trust a bald man in chaps. Number 6. Kurt walks around backstage in his underwear beating people up. It's exactly what it says it is, alright? A show-long storyline on the July 19, 2007 edition of TNA Impact concerned Kurt Angle's efforts to get his stolen possessions back. The Olympian had his clothes, bag, and title belts all nicked while he was tanning and proceeded to walk around backstage wearing only a red speedo and matching flip-flops at the Universal Studios soundstage demanding that they be returned. Along the way, he accused Jeremy Borash of staring at his package and beat up Shark Boy, who he believed was smiling about his fate despite it just being his mask design as well as a backstage production worker who he hit with a running axe handle off a table. It was ludicrous, wonderful entertainment. It all led to a scene where Angle came down to the ring in his bathrobe, was confronted by Samoa Joe, and after countering Joe's attempt to lay him out, ended up putting the Samoan submission machine through a table and slapping on the ankle lock. All this in his bright red speedo. Talk about sexy Kurt. Number 5. The Somersault Stage Dive As a world-class amateur wrestler, Kurt Angle unsurprisingly adopted a pro wrestling style that was heavy on submissions, takedowns, and suplexes. But just because the gold medalist could tie you up in knots or throw you halfway across the ring doesn't mean he was necessarily averse to taking to the skies. Never was this more apparent than during his Falls Count Anywhere battle with Abyss at TNA Turning Point 2008. With the monster recovering on the arena floor, Angle found it incumbent upon himself to do a running front flip onto him off the stage. Now, this would be a risky move for your average X-Division daredevil, but for a man with a notoriously dodgy neck… Don't get me wrong, it was a beautifully executed move, but if Kurt didn't have a 300-pound human crash pad or was even a fraction of a second off, things could have gone very badly. I feel like it's also worth mentioning that this was the same match that Angle put a chair onto Abyss and delivered an inch-perfect move moonsault just because he was, you know, mental. Number 4. The Raw Cage Moonsault Speaking of moonsaults, one of our man's special party tricks was doing a big backflip off the top of a steel cage. Angle could arch with the best of them, though due to his inexperience, he wasn't so confident when it came to actually hitting the move. In fact, much less so after accidentally breaking Bob Holly's arm. While he may not have been too hot on actually landing on a specific target, he was more than willing to take a belly flop for the team, even if it was coming from a great height. On the June 11th, 2001 edition of Monday Night Raw, Kurt and Chris Benoit were given a rare main event singles outing when they were booked in a steel cage grudge match. As Angle tells it, both he and the rabid Wolverine made an extra effort to impress WWE Champion Steve Austin, who provided commentary from ringside. What they actually ended up doing was scaring the Texas Rattlesnake off, with Kurt's insane empty pool bump taking not only the wind out of his own sails, but the breath out of every fan watching on in awe. Number 3. The Lockdown Cage Moonsault Of course, a spot like a moonsault off the top of a freaking cage isn't something you do just the one time, is it? Not if you perk Angle, anyway. Almost a decade after he went splat on Raw, Angle resurrected the high spot for his brutal and compelling cage contest with Mr. Anderson at TNA Lockdown 2010. Their feud had been incredibly personal up to that point, and both men pulled out all the stops to deliver a classic. And amazingly, Kurt actually hit the move on this occasion. It was flawless, and as much credit as Angle deserves for pulling it off, Anderson deserves as much for willingly lying there and putting his life, or his face anyway, in his opponent's free-falling hands. Anderson has since said that not only did Kurt barely touch him, but that TNA producers had no idea the move was coming. Angle suspected they wouldn't let him if he told them ahead of time, so he informed Ken on the sly and agreed to take the heat when he got backstage. Number 2. His Pathological Pursuit of Charmel There were lots of directions the Kurt Angle character could have gone in after he defeated Shawn Michaels in a five-star classic at WrestleMania 21. Angle had real momentum and was on the top of his game, but all he wanted to be on top of was Booker T's wife, Charmel. Yes, for some bizarre reason, WWE creative forces scripted Kurt to go after Charmel, which included some of the creepiest segments and interviews ever seen on WWE TV. 
From kicking her down and threatening to kidnap her to expressing his desire to have um, interspecies relations with her, Angle was a constant menace. I'm sure it wasn't what he envisioned for his future when he was stood on that podium in Atlanta back in 96, but it was certainly memorable. Not good, of course, but memorable, and showed a new side of Kurt's character. The man himself has labelled it the worst storyline he's ever been a part of, but his dislike for the creative direction didn't prevent him from giving it his absolute all and allowing himself to look like a total and utter deviant. Number 1. Breaking Glass with Shane O'Mac Nobody, and I mean nobody, expected Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon to go as hard as they did at King of the Ring 2001. Not only was Kurt pretty clean-cut and scientific as far as his wrestling style was concerned, but he had already wrestled two tournament matches earlier that night. Shane, meanwhile, was happy to get his hands dirty in a hardcore environment, but there is a world of difference between dirty hands and a body full of broken glass. Their street fight was going swimmingly when they decided to make their way to the stage set for a pre-planned stunt. Kurt was supposed to throw Shane through some gimmick sheets of glass, but unbeknownst to the combatants, WWE's props department had switched it out for the real thing as they were worried that the explosion caused by the show's pyro would cause it to shatter. Well, the fireworks didn't break it, but Shane's head did, eventually anyway. After several attempts, Angle hit a suplex and then simply threw Shane face first through the sharp stuff. It is still one of the damnedest things ever witnessed during a WWE show, and a textbook example of Kurt Angle going full perk.